Pretty excited, we just got the block back from the machine shop for our 351 stroker project. Um, we're gonna start going through this thing, trying to get the whole rotating assembly in, and we'll show you guys how to do it step by step so you can build your own at home for your car. So we're gonna start assembling our 351 Windsor today. Uh, just got it back from the machine shop. Um, it was bored over, line honed here. New cam bearings in the bottom put in, new frost plugs. Um, after all of that, it was washed at the machine shop, but make sure that you go through, spend the time, and clean it with lacquer thinner to make sure there's nothing else in any of it prior to assembly. Okay, so you just saw us clean the block with lacquer thinner uh, after we got it back from the machine shop. We're going to do the same thing to the crank, make sure the crank's perfectly clean. And I came in and I put the main bearings in, and this side has a slot in it, you can see, for the oil. Once the crank's clean, we're going to put a bit of assembly lube on the bearing, put some more on the crank, and drop it down in the hole. So we cleaned the crank. Put our assembly lube on each main, assembly lube the main bearing, and set the crank in the hole. Now we're going to take the main caps, put the bearings in, assembly lube that, and we'll show you how to torque them. So we got the main caps on, and now we're going to put a little bit of ARP assembly lube on here for our ARP studs, and we'll put the nuts on, and then start torquing it down. So our main caps are on, we did ARP lubricant on the nuts and the washers underneath and now we're going to start torquing them from the inside and work our way out in a circle pattern. Uh, we need to finish at 90 foot pounds so we're going to start at 30, we'll go 60 and then jump to 90. Done. So tonight we're going to show you how to gap the piston rings. Um, what you're going to need is feeler gauges, a file, and a little grinder. So this is what we have. And you put the piston ring on here and then you slide it forward and backward like this. And that will grind the piston ring according to where this dial set. And what you do is slide the piston ring in the piston or, and then you're going to take another piston and you can see it's got the top ring on it. You're going to set the piston in, press the ring up so it touches the block and that's going to ensure that the piston ring is parallel with the surface that the head mounts on. What you're trying to do is if you can see, if you can see the gap in the piston ring right there, right above my finger, you're measuring that gap. So on this motor, we're looking for 26 thousandths of an inch gap. So you're going to take your feeler gauge and put it in the hole, and you're going to measure where there's just a little bit of drag on that. So this shows. 26 thousandths of an inch, you can see there. Perfect. So, that top ring is done. We're going to set it aside with that bore, or that piston that's going to go in that hole, and that one's set for that. We move on to the other seven cylinders now. I forgot to mention, every time you're finished uh, grinding the ring, say so you're going to check it to see how much you actually took off, Every time that's done, you need to go take your file and clean the edge. What I mean by that, let me get out of the way here, is you're going to cut this edge here. You need to take the file and take the burr off that edge before you measure the gap that's in the middle. If you don't, you may be measuring the burr and you won't have the right size. Okay, so that's all of them. It took about a half an hour. Um, it's a little faster with those this electric one. Um, if you have the hand one, it may take you a little bit longer, but again, you just want to make sure that when you're doing this, you're going to file 
the edge when you're done grinding and when you put it in the cylinder that the gap in here is what the piston manufacturer recommends. Now we're going to go through, we're going to lacquer cleaner them, make sure there's no grindings on them, install them on the pistons and then start to assemble. Now I'm going to show you how to put on the piston rings. Um, so you're going to take your piston ring, make sure you have the top and the bottom so you know which one is going to go where. This piston ring is my bottom ring. So as you can see here, you have the top ring that's going to go right in this slot here. Then you have this bottom ring slot. And then the very bottom is your oil ring here. It's a three piece that you have to put in. This ring that I'm going to put on is the second. So we're going to put it into the first slot. And what you do is you insert one side of it and then slowly just walk it around like this and it will drop right into place. There you go. So now it's in the first ring. We're going to drop it one more the exact same way. Start with one edge here, push it down and you're just going to walk it all the way around. Just move your finger like this and it will drop down into where you need it. Now we're going to go ahead and do the top ring. On these piston rings, there's a little notch. Uh, you can't see it here. But there's an M on it to say that that is up. So make sure that's up. Then we're going to do the same thing. Start one corner and just walk it around with your finger. And it'll drop right in. Bang. Done. That's all it takes to put on piston rings. So we got our piston rings. Uh, top ring is 26 thou. Bottom ring is 24 thou. Assembled the piston onto the rod with the wrist pins. A little bit of assembly lube goes on there. Now we're going to put the bearings in. We'll put a little assembly lube and then we'll come over to the engine where you put the piston ring compressor on and you press the piston up through the bore and connect it onto the crank. Getting ready to put the pistons into the cylinders now. So what you're going to do is you want to wipe this out with lacquer thinner. We've already done that. Make sure you blow it out just to make sure there's nothing off your rag that's left inside. And lastly, you want to take a rag, put a little bit of engine oil, and you want to go down the bore. Go down the bore so that the rings can slide through. And we're going to put a little bit of assembly lube on the rings, or on the... Uh, the main bearing, so the bearing is already installed here. We're going to put a little bit of assembly lube here and then we're going to slide it through the hole. Now that our cylinders have been wiped with oil, we need to set our rings. So zero is with the pin. Each side of the oil ring is going to be 30 degrees left and right. The top two rings are going to be 30 degrees on the other side of the piston, here and here. So it'll form an X when you're finished. It's real helpful to use a small pick or um, a small screwdriver to help you line those up real quick. Okay, that's our lower two on the oil ring. We're going to have one piston ring there and one there. Now we're going to take our piston ring compressor. This again is just a cheap taper one off of Amazon. Um, I think it was 18 bucks. You can buy them anywhere from 
18 bucks to 210 from Snap-on. So just buy, you know, if you're going to build a lot of them, you might want to get an expensive one. I hope to only build this thing once, so we bought the one off of Amazon. A quick check to make sure our rings are in the right position. And you slip it through. Now, a good thing to make sure you check, our pistons have a relief here cut for the valves. You can see them uh, there and there. You want to make sure that those are in the right spot. If they were upside down like this, the valve will hit the piston up here. So you slide that on. Rotate the crankshaft so that it's at the top for that cylinder and just lightly tap it and it'll walk itself in. Easy as that. Six more to go. So, last night we torqued up the main caps uh, for the rods. The rods got tightened to 75 foot pounds as they are ARP 2000 volts. Um, so, again, just work your way up. We started with 30, went to 50, then we went right up to 75. Now we have the girdle in place. We're going to put some Loctite on the um, threads. And we're going to drop the nuts on, those get torqued to 40. And then we're going to drop the oil pump in. Make sure you don't forget the oil pump drive here. So that'll go in, oil pump goes down, and we're almost ready to put the oil pan on, flip it over and start doing the top end. So we have the nuts on, a little bit of Loctite. Now we're going to torque them, they go to 40 uh, foot pounds. So what we're going to do is start in the middle and work our way out in circle pattern the same as you do with the main caps. Double check, make sure they're all at 40. <clears throat> That's it, as easy as that. Gasket here on the block for the oil pump. We'll put the oil pump in the pickup on, and that's it, let's roll it over. So we're getting ready to wrap up the short block of this 351 build that we're doing. Uh, we're about ready to install the camshaft and the lifters, and we'll get the top end on it so we can fire it up. Getting ready to put in our camshaft. You want to make sure you're going to use assembly lube down the entire length of the cam. You want to make sure you slide it in slowly so that you don't nick the lobes as it goes through the new bearing. Some assembly lube on, put it around the entire bearing surface.
ready to start sliding it in. Take your time. We're going to make sure to put a little bit of lube on the cam gear here that's going to ride on the distributor. And we're ready to slide it in the rest of the way. Just installing our Cometic head gaskets and our ARP head studs on our 351 Windsor that we're building. You want to make sure that on the front of the block it's solid and at the rear of the block you have the coolant passages. If you have this flipped over it will fit, it will go on, but you will have coolant coming in from the water pump here and directly out here up into the intake it will not cool back here. The coolant right now comes in from the, the water pump all the way through the coolant passages out up into the head into the intake and back. Just another little helpful tip building on a 351 Windsor. Got our ARP head studs in place. We started at 40 foot pounds, moved up to 60, 80, 90, 100. Now we're going to finish at 110. Make sure you go on a circle pattern from the inside out. So it's changed a little bit from last time you guys saw it. Um, let's take a little bit closer look. We got the rocker arms just sitting there in place right now. They're not torqued down. I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, intake manifolds on. Thermostat, thermostat housings on. Electric water pumps on. Timing covers on. Dampers on our supercharger bracket is just mocked up in place. I had to clearance it a little bit right here around the water pump. So we'll send it back out for powder, clean that up. The little spacer right here, I didn't have powder coated, that'll go out for powder. I got the oil sending unit. Extension right here in place. I'll get it from the front. Maybe you can see it a little better. There it is. And this port is going to be for the supercharger feed. And the port on the side on the angle here is going to be for the oil pressure sender itself. So you know how much oil pressure you have. And our pilot on pan. 
We went and put our return bung in. So we'll feed up through the, to the supercharger from this port and back into the oil pan through this one. So we're getting ready now. Putting the carburetor bolts in place, the studs. So we can put our lifting plate on. Once the lifting plate's on, we'll take it off the stand. We still need to do the rear main seal that goes here. And then the flywheel, the clutch, which we're gonna go over, it's a twin disc clutch. How to set that up. And then we're getting ready to put it in. I didn't put the distributor in as we're going to prime the system with the distributor here before we start. And these are your, one is supposed to be for the heater, which we're not gonna use, so I'll just put a plug. And the other is going to be our temperature sensor for the coolant. So we're getting there. I did a quick spray paint job on it with the uh, engine enamel ceramic in it. And uh, we're getting closer. Hopefully we have this thing fired up by the weekend. I'm sure you guys can see that I went ahead without the camera and the intake and everything got put on. Um, sometimes when you get into a build and the battery on the camera dies, you're, you're so close, you just want to keep going. So that's what we did. Um, you know, it's not that big of a deal to put a intake manifold on or a timing cover in there anyways. So I went through all the really hard stuff with you, gapping rings and setting all your crank and everything in the hole. So, you know, that's, that's the real important stuff. An intake manifold or a timing cover, that's little piddly stuff. Um, you'll see the timing cover and the water pump on this one have to come back off uh, as the water pump hits the supercharger belt. So it'll go through that in the next video. I still have not adjusted the rockers. We're going to be going back and doing that. Um, I had a problem with the distributor from MSD, so they took it back and they're going to be taking care of that for me. And once we get it back, we'll go back through the car and set up the rockers and everything else. So we're still getting the video on that stuff, but I jumped ahead on it. Um, I hope you guys liked the video here, putting this thing together. It was a lot of work, but you know what? It saves a ton of money doing it yourself. Uh, you could take it to a machine shop, of course, and have them do it for you, but there's a little bit of pride in doing it yourself. So if you like what we see, share the video and uh, subscribe. We got a bunch more coming.